everybody and welcome back to another tutorial or maybe this is your first time here in which case welcome it is lovely to have you here big shout out to everyone liking commenting subscribing on youtube and a huge massive thanks to these awesome folks supporting over on patreon this support really does help me keep making this kind of content so a massive thank you to all of these people everything that we're going to make today is available to patreon members and link in description below if you want to grab that also available as a one-off purchase right what are we looking at today well we're branching out a bit we're branching out i recently put out an album called non-determinative outcomes this was an audio visual album where i explored using touch designer to make visuals for the album and what you can see and hear in the background right now is the end result of one of those this is one of the tracks from the album link in the description below if you want to check out the whole album as well and i got a bunch of questions hey could you do it maybe do a tutorial on how you connect ableton and touch designer so i thought yeah that's actually that's a nice idea <laughs> this is a really nice idea so what I'm going to look at today is some super basics. You saw the visual uh, that was happening at the start of this whole tutorial, and that's what we're going to make today. So uh, this tutorial is aimed at people who have never tried connecting Ableton and Touch Designer before, and we're going to look at some super basic stuff on how we can use MIDI from Ableton to change stuff inside Touch Designer. Full disclosure, I'm not a pro Touch Designer folk. There are awesome channels, and I'll link to a couple of those below as well if you want to really explore doing some insanely cool visuals inside of Touch Designer. Yeah, but for today, we're going to keep it really basic, just looking at how I use MIDI to control stuff inside Touch Designer. If you like this tutorial and you want me to do more on stuff like this, comment below, let me know, and I will do some more of these kind of tutorials. Right. Let's get stuck into it. So if you want to follow along, uh, I've prepared some stuff today. I prepared the, well, you heard a beat at the start, kind of a jungly beat. It's got two layers, some breaks, and a kick and a snare. The kick and the snare is what we're going to use to control stuff inside of inside of Touch Designer. So if you want to prepare yourself an Ableton project that just has a drum rack and a kick and a snare inside it, uh, that's a good place to start. And the other thing you'll need to do is, of course, download and install Touch Designer. This is free. You can grab it for free if you're using it in non-commercial, non-professional settings, which is a super nice way to do a program. Link in the description below if you want to grab that. And you'll also need to prepare by installing the latest TD Ableton system. Again, this link is in the description. You can follow the instructions here on how to set up Ableton and Touch Designer to actually talk to each other. That involves installing a couple of things. So maybe pause this video and go and do those things. Make yourself a cup of tea and come back, something like that. So I'm going to assume that you've done all of that. We've got Ableton here. We've got Touch Designer open here with just a blank project. And we're going to start from the start. So we're going to start inside of Touch Designer. And I'm just going to create a white uh, square. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to add an operator. I'm going to choose tops here. Uh, I'm going to choose a rectangle and I'm just going to drop that in here. I'm going to adjust the output resolution immediately. So I click on the common tab and I want the output resolution for me to be 1280 by 1280. This just affects how sharp the image is. You also have drop down and sort of standard, uh, standard resolutions here as well. I kind of like to do it as a square. We're working with a square. Now I'm going to right click on the right hand side here and I'm going to add what's called a null. I'm going to sort of put that somewhere over here, click and drop it. And I'm going to hit this button display active. So now we can see that in the background. And there is our rectangle. Super nice. Let's go back to the rectangle tab here. And let's change a couple of things. So I'm going to go to rectangle here. And we have, we have fill and we have border and we have background. So in fact, I don't want the fill. I just want the border because I want it to be a, a, a square without a center filled in. So I'm going to turn the fill alpha. This is how strong the fill color is. I'm going to turn that all the way down to zero. I'm going to turn the border alpha, well, the border alpha is already all the way up to one. I'm going to change the border color to be white. And we still don't see it because we have no border width. So I'm going to just turn the border width up and there we see a white square appearing. Now I also want that to be over a black background. So I'm going to right click here. I'm going to insert an operator called a transform. We're going to come back to that uh, a little bit later. But for now, I'm just going to change some settings. Uh, we're going to change uh, the background color uh, to one and we're going to turn comp over background color on. Now we have a white square on a black background. <laughs> Super nice. Right. So what I like to do when I'm exploring Touch Designer is go to the things that are making making the shapes or making the movement and just try adjusting some things and thinking what might be interesting to connect with a sound. So, you know, this 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 is kind of fun. The it rotating and going round and round. We could also connect perhaps the 
border width that could be that could be something interesting to connect with the sound uh we could connect the softness uh and I, actually i really like this softness and I, I think that could be really nice for when a kick drum hits that it sort of makes it go boom and sort of disappears it disappears into the background i'm also going to make this slightly bigger i'm going to make it 0.7 actually yeah let's leave it as a rectangle let's leave it as a rectangle i kind of like that as a rectangle right so how do we make the kick drum do this well, we need to set up a couple of things. I'm going to go back to Ableton. And on the main channel over here, I'm going to, in, I'm going to drag over from the Touch Designer palette, Touch Designer Places. If you've installed it, you should now have a folder here in your places that says Touch Designer. I'm going to drag the TDA master onto the master output of my pro, uh, project. So there I have the TDA master on the master channel of my project. Now I'm going to come, uh, come back to Touch Designer. And over here in what's called the palette, if you can't see the palette, maybe it looks like this, then hit this little button here and this will open up the palette. This is a bit like Ableton's browser is how I think of it. So here you should now have somewhere that says TD Ableton. And then we have uh, some different versions. I'm going to click on Live 11 Plus because I'm on 12.3. Uh, and here we have a whole bunch of kind of, I think of them as like plugins, uh, components or operators. What, what, is the, what do we call them here? Operator, yeah. But uh, kind of like plugins. So I'm going to drag in the uh, Ableton package, TD Ableton package. So this will now automatically connect Touch Designer with Ableton. This little mismatch thing will come up. Click OK, that's fine. Uh, and this has now made a sort of back end connection between Ableton and between Touch Designer, which is uh, which is really nice. So now we can bring in stuff and begin to connect stuff. Uh, so I'm going to come to back to Ableton here. I'm going to come to my drum rack that has my kick and my snare in it. I'm going to mute the snare. I'm just going to press play on that. And there we have the kick drum. So I'm going to come to the kick drum here and I'm going to bring in uh, this TDA MIDI device. I'm going to drag that in in front of the kick drum. So this is now receiving a piece of MIDI input every time uh, the kick drum is triggered and you can see the values here. I'm going to rename that TD Kick. Now I'm going to come back to Touch Designer over here uh, and I'm going to bring in a Ableton MIDI device. Now I need to tell this which, a, which device to listen to. So I come over here to track, I go to drum rack, I say device, I want to listen to the drum rack. Uh, we're gonna say it's on the kick, and our chain one device is the TD kick. And now we can see this receiving information every time there's a kick drum. So you can see all kinds of information. We have uh, last note information, we have last velocity, and we have uh, note information here. So I'm going to right click and select one of those bits of information. So I'm gonna choose a select device and I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna, where it says channel names, I'm just going to select last note. And we can see that that's now said, oh, this is the only information that we're interested in. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Now, every time the kick drum happens, this is giving me a value of 100 and then straight back to zero. I don't want it to go to 100, I just want it to go to one. So I'm going to use a limit device, right click. We're gonna use a limit, Operator, a limit operator. I keep, I keep using device as I, it kind of is cross-platform for me. This functions kind of like an audio limiter and it also functions a bit like the fold, uh, sorry, the, yeah, the fold function that I looked at in my MIDI effects deep dive video uh, a, couple of, a couple of videos ago, but <laughs> you don't need to know that. We're gonna go limit, we're gonna choose clamp and we're gonna choose the minimum zero and the maximum one. So what that's gonna do, is now it changes this value no matter what this value is it's just going to make it one in here which is really nice uh, now i'm going to right click and add a null device i'm going to leave a little bit of space i'm going to uh, do what's called make the viewer active i'm going to come to the rectangle i'm going to click and drag that onto the softness i'm going to choose chop reference and now we can see this happening Every, every time the kick drum happens. It's happening super quick. How do we make it happen slower? Well, we're gonna add another device in here. We're gonna right click and insert operator. And I'm gonna choose lag. And I think of this as a bit like a rise and fall or a slew in modular synth terms. And you can see it's happening. It's sort of slowing down how quickly those values are changing from zero to one. Maybe I want it to have kind of zero attack. So it immediately starts and then slowly comes back out. And I want it to come out a bit slower. So this is the kind of the fall. Uh, let's make that 0.6. Yeah, really nice. Okay, so that, uh, that kick drum is now doing this lovely 
uh, and it's making that that rectangle sort of go off all splodgy and come back. Super nice. Right. Let's find something else to control. Let's control the size of this rectangle using the snare drum. Let's come back to Ableton. Let's turn the snare drum back on. Let's come to the snare drum and let's drag a TDA MIDI device in front of that. And let's rename that to be TD Snare. Come back to Touch Designer here. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to bring in an Ableton MIDI device. And we're going to tell it which device to listen to. So we're going to choose Drum Rack. We're going to choose Drum Rack. We're going to choose Snare this time. And we're going to choose TD Snare. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to right click. We're going to add in a Select. We're going to say only want to listen to Note 60. Which is of course C3. <laughs> Just making the connection there. Uh, we're going to limit this to again to go instead of from zero to one. We're going to go from zero to instead of zero one hundred. We're going to go zero to one. So we're going to choose clamp. We're going to choose minimum zero, and we're going to choose maximum one. And we're going to right click and we're going to add a null device in here. Now the way that we're going to use this to control the size is we're going to add a little a little device in here, an operator in here. We're going to insert operator and we're going to use the transform device now what the transform device does is it allows us to control all sorts of things to do with exactly where the image is being positioned so we could move it across to you know to, to the left or to the right uh, 0 0.5 and you can see that's moved across to the right or negative 0.5 that's moving it across to the left. You can see there, let's put that back to zero. And this, this one moves it up and down. So we've got x axis and y axis. We could also rotate the image, which is also kind of cool. Let's put that back to zero. And we have a scale here. So the scale of the x axis and the scale of the y axis. And this is what I want to control with the snare. So I've got my null here. I'm going to choose viewer active. I'm going to come here, over here and I'm going to drag that onto the scale here. I'm going to choose Chop Reference. Now you can see that the scale is going from 0 to 1 every time that the snare drum hits. I don't want it to go from 0 to 1. I want it to go from maybe 0.5 to 1. So I'm going to do that with a device in here. Remember, I in my MIDI effects deep dive video, I talked about MIDI just being packets of information. And there's a packet of information traveling between here that has you know stuff to do with, well, 0 to 1 values. So I'm going to intercept that packet of information. I'm going to change the values. I'm going to use a math device to do that. And we're going to change the range here. Instead of the input range is going from zero to one. And this is the output range, the two range, the from and the two range. We're going to just make this, uh, let's make it 0.6. That's super nice. Now we have the snare drum controlling this size. And we have the kick drum controlling that's sort of disappearing. Maybe let's make the snare drum also a little bit of lag so it's not quite so flashy. Let's add a lag device in here. And let's make this much shorter. Let's make this 0 0.5. And maybe this also 0 0.5. 0 0.05, sorry. Let's make this 0, actually. This is actually really nice. OK, cool. Now let's just add a little bit of background texture to this. So I'm going to drag this null over uh, and I'm going to drag this transform over and we're just going to add another couple of things in here. So I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to right click and I'm going to insert operator called a composite. This allows us to add two images together in all sorts of different ways. We can multiply the images together. We can use, well, you can see the list down here. For now, we're going to leave it on multiply. I'm going to right click and I'm going to add operator and I'm going to add a noise device. Again, I'm still in the tops here. I'm going to add a noise top. Uh, I'm going to change the resolution to be the same. So that's 1280 by 1280. I'm going to come back here to the noise and I'm going to click and I'm going to drag this also into the connect, into the into the composite, sorry. So now you can see this noise is appearing in the in over where we have the whiteness here. Uh, I'm going to maybe actually maybe make that rectangle a bit a bit thicker. That's a bit nicer. And maybe I actually want it to be happening in the middle here. So I'm going to add a little bit of the fill alpha back in. Yeah, so now we can see it a little bit in the middle here and really strong on the outside. This is really nice. Let's make this noise move a little bit. So I'm going to come to the transform tab here. And much the same as the transform operator, this transform tab allows us to move the noise around a bit. So I'm just going to come to translate here. I'm going to choose this, this axis. I'm going to write in a little script. Abs time 
dot seconds. So this is going to animate that noise according to seconds. And now we can see that noise moving around. Super nice. I know this is not exactly what I made at the start, but it's, it's pretty close. And I just wanted to explore these, these processes of how to connect MIDI stuff. Let's add the jungle break back in, because that was also kind of nice to give it a bit of context. That's a super basic way to connect Ableton MIDI stuff with stuff inside of Touch Designer. This was by no means an in-depth tutorial, just a, a, a starting point. You know, you might want to use these, these Ableton MIDI concepts and follow somebody else's Touch Designer tutorial about how to make something much more interesting visually and then connect these, these, these nulls to different things instead of connecting them to the size and to the, to the softness. You could connect them to, you know, well, whatever you're making in another tutorial. You're adults. You can make your own decisions. If you'd like me to make more stuff like this about Ableton and Touch Designer, let me know in the comments below. Patreon members can download both this Touch Designer set and the Ableton set. This was super fun. I'll catch you next time.